Hello and then welcome to Emergency Care in the Streets Chapter 10 Lifespan Development Lecture. After you complete this chapter and the related coursework, you will have a fundamental understanding of the physiologic and psychosocial differences of each phase of human development. Okay, so let's get started. Humans evolve as people over their lifespans, and paramedics must be aware of the changes that humans undergo at each stage of their life. Changes will be obvious and sometimes physical and mental. These changes may affect the approach to patient care. So let's start with infants. An infant is a person aged one month to one year. Babies younger than one month are called newborns or neonates, depending on their age. And so infants both grow and develop. The growth is defined as an increase in size and development represents increased function or mastery of skills. So physical changes with vital signs, the younger a person, the faster their pulse rate and respirations. So in children, blood pressures often correspond with the weight, typically increasing with age. Weight of full term newborn usually weighs about 7.5 pounds at birth. Due to fluid loss, infants lose 5% to 10% of their birth weight in the first week. So infants begin gaining weight again during their second week. Growth at a rate of one ounce per day. Their weight doubles by six months and triples by one year. Cardiovascular systems, Prior to birth, fetal circulation occurs through placenta. Post-birth, infants experience physical changes to enable independent circulation through their own vasculature. The pulmonary system, so a newborn's first forceful breath results from chemical, mechanical, thermal, and sensory triggers. Young infants who are nose breathers for the first several months of their lives, those under six months are prone to nasal congestion. So they can cause viral upper respiratory infections. So check to ensure nasal passages are clear if called for a choking infant. When compared to adult, infants have the following characteristics. They have less rigid rib cages, diaphragm in a newborn, major respiratory muscle. Intercostal muscles are not well developed yet. Immature accessory muscles, which may cause fatigue, and proportionately larger tongue, and proportionately shorter, narrow airways, which may cause occlusion more easily than an adult. They have fewer alveoli, which decreases surface area for gas exchange, and fragile lungs that are easily damaged by excessive force or volume when providing bag valve mass ventilations. So barotrauma is trauma from pressure, and it's imperative to use the correct size bag mass device for the patient. Their renal systems. So newborns and infants can be easily dehydrated, the ability of the newborn's kidneys co to concentrate urine and excrete water may also cause dehydration. The high percentage of water in infant urine may cause electrolyte imbalances. Also their immune system. So infants have a passive immunity acquired from their moms that continues during their first year of life. Breastfed infants receive additional antibodies via milk. And when it comes to their nervous system, Infant's nervous system uh, continues to evolve following birth, so newborns cannot localize and isolate a particular response to sensation. An infant's brainstem and spinal are present and functioning, but memory and fine motor coordination are not yet fully developed. An infant's ability to control body temperature is very limited, and the motor and sensory develop are most developed by cranial nerves, which control blinking, sucking, and gag reflexes. Infants are born with the following four reflexes. They have the Moro reflex, and that's when the infant is startled. He or she opens her arms wide and spreads their fingers, grabbing at things. They have the Palmer grasp, and that's when infant grabs an object that is placed in their hand. They have a rooting reflex. When touched on one cheek, the infant turns the head towards that touch. 
and they have the sucking reflex. That's when infants start to suck when their lips are touched. Many of these reflexes are tested when feeding. And they're fontanelles. So it allows the head to be molded, for example, when passing through the birth canal. Three or four bones of the skull, eventually they bind together and form suture joints by the age two. A sunken anterior fontanelle may indicate dehydrations. And sleep pattern is developed through a combination of nervous system development and parental efforts. Most infants develop the ability to sleep for five hours by age three months. Some do not develop this until one year. A concern related to infant sleep is sudden infant death syndrome or SIDS. Muscular system, so growth plates, um, often called epithelial plates, are located on either end of the infant's long bones and are the centers where longitudinal bone growth occurs. Growth charts, they track the growth in, of infants and children. They provide percentages comparing to child's growth to growth expected for the age of the child. And then teeth, teeth um, teething generally begins between ages four to seven months. Teeth erupt in a predetermined order, and most children have all of their teeth by age three. The permanent teeth start to come in around age six. Psychosocial changes. So an infant's psychosocial development begins at birth and involves as the infants interact with and react to their environment. Infants typically have their own timetable for becoming attached to their family and bonding formation of close personal friendship or relationship. It usually is based on a secure attachment, which occurs when an infant understands that parents or caregivers will be responsive to their needs. Um, an anxious avoidance attachment is observed in infants who are repeatedly rejected. These children become isolated. Most infants use crying as the primary method of communicating distress, and infants will cry to express anything. Parents can usually tell what an infant needs by the tone of the infant's cry. For infants, a reaction to a situational crisis follows three phases. There is the protest phase, and it can start immediately, usually lasts about a week. It includes loud crying, irritability, restlessness, and rejection of other caregivers' efforts. Then there's the despair phase, and this involves um, a monotonous wailing because the infant believes the situation is not going to change. And then there's a withdrawal. This occurs when the infant becomes almost apathetic and appears bored by his or her surroundings. Developing infants need um, a predictable environment to feel secure. If an infant's environment is too unpredictable, he or she may withdraw trust and mistrust. So stage of development from birth to about 18 months, infants gains trust when caregivers provide a planned, organized, and stable environment. Infants respond well to um, scaffolding, and this is instructional technique in which the person builds on what has already been learned. So temperament, easy children have normal body function, have low intensity reactions, and adjust readily to their surroundings. You should adjust your approach to an infant based on the patient's developmental age. Allow caregivers to hold the infant. Allow caregivers to hold the infant during a physical assessment and um, distract the child. Save the hardest part of the assessment for treatment and treatment for last. Okay, so the next group we're going to talk about is toddlers and preschoolers. And there are physical changes. And those, a toddler is a child age one to two years. A preschooler is a child age three to five years. And as compared to an infant, vital signs in this group are as followed. So pulse and respiratory rate are slower than infants. Systolic blood pressure is higher than infants, approximately 100 millimeters mercury, and weight gain levels off. A toddler's cardiovascular system is similar to that of an adult's. Um, toddlers lose their passive immunity and begin to develop colds, so this um, exposure to others help them acquire their own immunity. 
toddlers and preschoolers experience numerous types of musculature growth, including the development of gross motor skills and uh, grabbing objects with the full palm, and they develop fine motor skills such as picking up a crayon. Muscle mass and bone density increase and become more like those of an adult. Renal system changes, including bladder control. So the average age for toilet training is about 18 months. Baby teeth will emerge through the teething process and may include pain and fever, and sensory development makes uh, tickling fun. Psychosocial changes, so separation anxiety peaks between ages eight, 10 to 18 months. Language acquisition occurs in phases beginning with the ability to speak at one, uh, one to two words at age one year. Most children master basic language by uh, three, age three to four years, understanding that and using complete sentences. And toddlers begin interacting with peers, which results in learning about control, obedience, and competitiveness through game playing. Paramedics should consider the following when caring for toddler and preschool patients. So always include the parent and caregiver. Position yourself at the child's level and explain what you plan to do ahead of time, giving the child choices whenever possible, and then save the hardest part of the assessment for last. Other factors also affect the psychosocial development of the toddlers and preschoolers. So there are three approaches to parenting affects a child's development. So there's the authoritarian style, and this expects complete obedience, disregards a child's personal freedom, and may lead to a child having self-esteem issues. There's the authoritative style, and this sets and reinforces rules, balancing parental authority with the child's personal freedom, and allows children to develop an independent, well-socialized, easygoing adults. Then there's a per permissive style that does not impose any rules, if any, on the child and tolerates all behaviors, including socially unacceptable ones. And it may div be divided into an indifferent parent who doesn't care or an indulgent parent who's excessively lenient, giving the impression of spoiled children. Although not uncommon in the United States, divorce has a profound effect on the child's self-esteem and sense of well-being. So children question if divorce has their, was their fault and experience pain from the changing environment. Most children adapt easy if both parents maintain their children as their priority. Okay, so the next um, age we're going to talk about is the school age children. This is age 6 to 12 years. And uh, the following physical changes often uh, affect patients in this group. So vital signs and physical body approach those of an adult. Children at this age grow approximately 5.5 to 7.7 .7 pounds and 2 inches each year. Brain function develops in both hemispheres. Permanent teeth arrive and puberty may begin at age 10 or younger. Children develop three stages of reasonal, reasoning. So there's pre-conventional, conventional, and post-conventional. So pre-conventional is reasoning involving acting to avoid punishment. Conventional is reasoning involving acting to obtain approval from peers in society. And then post-conventional is reasoning involving making decisions guided by consequence. Children develop self-concept and self-esteem. So self-concept definition is a person's perception of him or herself, and self-esteem is how a person feels about him or herself. Paramedics should use the same techniques employed for preschoolers. Note that gaining or losing trust is the biggest issue with this age group, so be direct, assertive, and open. Then we're going to talk about adolescents. These are teenagers aged 3 to 18 years. Vital signs level off to that about adult ranges. So systolic blood pressure is between 110 and 131 millimeters mercury. Pulse rates are between 60 to 100. And respirations are in the range of about 12 to 20. This age group undergoes rapid 
two to three year growth spurt as muscle and bone grows and blood chemistry changes. Patients in this age group undergo reproductive system changes, so secondary sexual characteristics develop in both males and females, including enlargement of external sexual organs and pubic and accelerary hair, changes in range and depth of voice, and girls' breasts and thighs increase in size and they begin menstruation, although the first period, which is called monarch, may occur in some school-age girls. Both sexes secrete hormones associated with reproduction, and conflict often marks the relationship between teenagers and their family. Privacy becomes more important. Self-consciousness um, increases as teenagers struggle to fit in. Rebelliousness may increase as a part of finding their identity, and peer pressure is a major factor. Some teens show more interest in sexual relations, and teens begin to develop their own code of personal ethics based on their parents and influences of their environment. Paramedics should provide discretion, respect, and privacy to this age group and speak to the patient in an area that is separate from the parents and caregivers if possible. Okay, and then there's early adults. That's in the next group we're going to talk about. And they are ages 19 to 40. Vital signs do not vary throughout adulthood, and pulse rates will stay around 70. Respiratory rates 12 to 20, and blood pressure will be approximately 12, 120 over 80 millimeters of mercury. And the human body functions at the most optimal level between these ages of 19 to 25. And the following physical changes occur after this group. So the spinal discs begin shrinking and fatty tissue increases and leads to weight gain. Work, family, and stress define the age group. Early adults do everything they can to settle down. This group tends to seek and find romantic love and have babies. This is considered to be the most stable periods of life with fewer physical changes and problems related to well-being. And then you have middle adults. These uh, middle adults are between 41 to 60. Despite the body's high level of function, patients in this group are vulnerable to the following physical changes. So vision and hearing loss, cardiovascular disease, weight gain due to lower metabolism and cancer rates increase. Women begin middle menopause between 40 to 50 and this causes bone density loss and cardiac conditions. People in this group focus on meeting their life's goal, so some must adjust to living with grown-up children, and some have financial worries as they face retirement. People now see crisis as a challenge to be overcome rather than a threat. And then you have uh, late adults. So this is people in the group that are 61 or older. And vital signs depend on the person's overall health, medical conditions, and uh, medications. The cardiovascular system. So atherosclerosis is caused by the buildup of cholesterol and calcium within the walls of the vessels. And this can lead to particular partial or complete blockage of blood flow in the vessel. In general, people in this age group have hearts that are less able to deal with exercise and disease as a result of the following. So decreased pulse rate, declining cardiac output, and an inability to elevate the cardiac output to match the body's demands. Overall, the vascular system becomes stiff, resulting in the following changes. So there's an increased diastolic blood pressure, decreased cardiac output, and reduced elasticity of the peripheral vessels of up to 70%, reduced ability to compensate for blood pressure changes. Fatty tissues begin to replace bone marrow, resulting in the production of fewer, fewer blood cells. The respiratory system, so the following structural changes make breathing more difficult for patients in this age group. So the size of the airway increases um, while while surface area of the alveoli decreases and lungs become less elastic, forcing people to use intercostal muscles to breathe, muscle strength of those intercostal muscles and diaphragm decreases. 
So changes in mouth and nose leave the airway less protected and the chances of aspiration and obstruction are more likely. So it's more difficult to clear secretions and cough and gag reflexes decline. Weakening of smooth muscles of the upper airway leads to collapse and respiratory wheezing and low flow rates. In older adults, the vital capacity is significantly decreased because of loss of respiratory muscle mass, increased stiffness of the thoracic cage, and decreased surface area available for air exchange. While vital capacity decreases, residual volume increases and causes stagnant air to hamper gas exchange in the alveoli in the endocrine system. So reduced physical activity and declining endocrine system leads to weight gain and changes in reproductive system occur in both men and women. So males still produce sperm, but they lose penis rigidity and females experience atrophy of uterus and vagin the vagina related to menopause decreasing uh, hormone production. And then the renal system. So structural and functional changes occur in the kidneys. Filtration declines significantly between ages 20 and 90, and aging kidneys respond less effectively to hemodynamic stress and to fluid and electrolyte imbalances, which means the body has decreased ability to eliminate waste and decreased ability to conserve fluids. And then gastrointestinal system. So functional changes may inhibit nutritional intake and utilization resulting in vitamin and mineral deficiencies. And um, so there is decrease in tent, taste, decreased saliva production, slower gastric mobility, diminishing acid secretion, decreased ability to excrete nutrients, and fecal incontinence. And then the nervous system. So central nervous system changes may include a brain weight loss of 10 to 20% by age 80, loss of between 5 to 50% in neurons, and loss of a much, as much of 20% of the frontal lobe synapsis, slower motor and sensory neuron networks. And note the brain's metabolic rate remains the same as does the oxygen consumption. So sleep patterns of older adopts, adults will change and become biphasic, so two-phased. So peripheral uh, nervous system changes may include overall diminished sensation and deteriorated nerve endings, which cause the skin's sens sensitivity to heat, cold, sharpness, and wetness. Um, so this can lead to injury. And then there's sensory changes. So while the senses are affected by aging, many patients in this group see and hear well. General eye and vision changes, though, include pupillary reaction um, in the pupils will become smaller and sluggish in response to light and increase visual distortions, decrease ability to focus at close range related to lens thickening and narrower peripheral fields of vision with greater sensitivity to glare. Hearing loss related to structural changes is four times more common than the loss of vision in this population. So eating becomes less pleasurable due to loss of both taste buds sensation and olfactory perception. Paramedics should value the chance to learn from wisdom of late adults. Five years before death, most maintain a high level of brain function. So general statistics related to this population include many live at home and most are active, healthy, and independent. Many have financial concerns relating to paying for health care and basic necessities. And late adults must come to terms with their own mortality, which may prove difficult as family members and friends die. So many older people are happy and actively participating in life. Okay. So this concludes Chapter 10 Development um, Lecture. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Thank you.